AM 650 KGAB, Cheyenne's number one news talk radio program. You're in tune with Weekend in Wyoming program. On the phone, I have Laramie County Sheriff Candidate Patrick Long. Good afternoon, Mr. Long. Good afternoon. How are you all doing today? Good. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for having me on your show. Now, you announced recently you're running for sheriff. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Correct. Yeah, I got into law enforcement back in... uh... Well, actually, when I graduated uh, high school, I went to college and graduated over in uh, Riverton at Central Wyoming College with an associate's degree. Then I got into law enforcement with uh, the Wyoming Department of Corrections, and I worked there for a couple years and continued to advance, and I did some uh, other state work in uh, security that kind of managed my uh, skills and built on my resume as m- and more of a community setting so that I could understand how uh, protocols and mostly with the state would work and then uh, I transitioned up here to Laramie County about six years ago and had been in the detention center for six years and uh, see a lot of issues here in Laramie County that I think I'm the man to fix so uh, I'd love to have the people's vote here uh, community oriented for sure uh, I just don't agree with a lot of stuff the, the current administration is doing and I think it needs fixed and somebody uh with enough uh, brass like me can fix that. I'm not afraid to take the heat and get out there and let people know who I am. So, What, what are some of the issues that you feel need to be fixed? Well, we have a lot of things going on in the sheriff's office and, and actually in Laramie County that aren't being addressed. There's a whole lot of, uh, seems to be focused crimes on, uh, on, on revenue. You know, it's easy to get the DUIs, so let's have my guys get the DUIs. But in the meantime, we're leaving other more important issues out there in the community we're not doing anything for the homeless population i strongly disagree with the uh open container issues that got passed downtown you know that's going to create problems uh that's not a reasonable solution to handle the homeless uh transient population that we we don't need to uh lock people up and throw away the key that's not that's not the goal of a community. The goal of the community and the goal of the detention center and the sheriff should be to rehabilitate the criminals and get them back on the streets through education, through programs within the detention center to get them as functioning individuals within the community. And, and, and it's really sad to say, but that's not uh, what's happening right now. What's, what's happening is it's the throw away the key mentality and, and that's not helping anybody. And that's how come the recidivism rate, if you look at it so high, the crime rates are so high, we we don't really do a whole lot of community-oriented policing right now, and that's a problem. There's a detachment between the the city, county, and state departments, and we need to get back to functioning more as a team unit, as a whole, uh, and everybody needs to get on board. And we need to do more functions in the community to let people know that we're there, that that we're not just somebody to be scared of and that we're not just going to put our name all over town when it's frontier days or special events. And that, and, uh, so yeah, I hope that kind of answers that question. Uh, you know, there's community oriented policing, but we're not doing it. All we're doing is focused on one little problem area and that's what we're going to do because that's what gets the numbers for us. And that's just not correct. It's got to be a joint function between all, agencies and work together to get things accomplished and get the community back on track it it's a it's an issue when we when the sheriff's office current administration creates policies and doesn't follow them themselves uh and and they need leadership there's not leadership there that's willing to be accountable for the actions and i've always been accountable for what i've done what i stand behind and what i do and i'll do that for the citizens of laramie county Okay, following up on a couple of points you touched on, when you're talking about community policing, uh, what is community policing and how would you like to implement it if you were elected? So so what happens with community-oriented policing is that everybody um, out there on patrol should have an assigned district or an assigned route that they're going to kind of look at. They're not just going to pick little hidey holes out by the outlaw to go ahead and say, oh, it's, you know, at this time we're going to, go ahead and turn those sirens on and bring somebody in for a DUI. They they should be out in the community getting to know the families that live in that neighborhood, getting to know your uh, rural citizens and and all that stuff. So community-oriented policing really focuses on the community so that 
you can have a good working relationship with everybody in the community. That way, when you have an officer out there in that section of the community that he's assigned to, he understands, oh, you know, I know this person. Let's talk. Let's let's figure this out on a more communication-based level than, uh, you know, oh, I don't know what's going on. Let me, let's, let's race over here and find out, and then confusion happens and things go where they don't need to be. So it mostly focuses on being with the community another aspect of that is is having events to put your officers out there i'd like to put uh school resource officers back in in uh in the laramie county school district uh i feel like i could adequately present a lot of arguments why we need school resource officers in our schools and why they should be county positions and not city positions because laramie county school district is laramie county so uh they should be county positions filled. Um, I'd like to bring back the D.A.R.E. program in the schools and, and get a close working relationship with the, with the kids in the schools. Um, there's a juvenile center out on Archer that uh, does some good, but that's only focuses on the individuals that are there for issues associated with their life, whether in the crisis center or, or on the juvenile side for uh, detention. Um, but we need to have a good working relationship with all the citizens and, and, and the root cause goes down to if we can get back in the schools and have a good working relationship with the students, they can interact with us. Then when they're older, we can avoid a lot of the crimes and stuff that we're having now. You know, it, and it's just about treating people good and, and being community oriented. Now, as, as I'm sure you're aware, the Cheyenne Police Department has an annual neighborhood night out program. Would you like to see the Sheriff's Department have a similar thing? I, I would I would I wouldn't only like to have an annual neighborhood night out because I don't like I said I don't think it's just something you do once a year I think it's something that you got to kind of work at and do at least quarterly maybe even monthly I'd like to get out in the community and have invites and open houses to to meet and greet people you know it's not something that uh, it, it, annually is great and I think that's good but it but it should be done more often and more frequently Okay, I'm speaking with Laramie County Sheriff's Candidate Patrick Long. By the way, if you have any questions or comments, we are taking calls, 632-3323. Uh, Patrick, you mentioned the homeless issues in Cheyenne. That's been an ongoing problem for as long as I can remember. I know our mayor recently said we need to have a community conversation about homeless people in Cheyenne. How would you address it? What, what are your views on that? Well, I think that the Comia Shelter does a great job. Um, right now, but it was just not a big enough facility to take care of that. Ideally, what I would like to see done is uh, there's a tearing down of the hotel across the what the the, the hitching post. I think that was what that was. Mm -hmm. And I know that they have uh, quite a bit of funding. The Comia Shelter does to go ahead and try to find housing for all these individuals on their own through through resources and grants that they've obtained and, and the people that have worked on that have done great things, but that's funding that's going to be lost if, if it's not used. So I think probably the best option would be to try to get something built that could be utilized for those people where where they can go in there and get checked in and, and kind of get restabilized out on their feet. And, and another option to kind of help run that would be if we utilize incarcerated individuals within the detention center to operate kind of the the kitchen atmosphere of that place or the food facility through a, through a work crew. So that's one way that I could get individuals uh, back in the community with some job skills is to kind of do that. I'd like to work with them and, and, and set up the ability to kind of help get the transient people off the streets, somewhere to go, somewhere warm where their option isn't, hey, let me go steal a steak from Safeway so I can get arrested and go to jail because that's not really what they want to do. They just don't want to freeze to death outside. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, but, but at the same time, they need to be able to help themselves also. So if you've got people that are really down on it on times and want to help themselves and check into the Comia shelter and get scheduled out and get some counseling placements for jobs and job skills and get a GED provided to them, then I think that's the direction that that needs to go because Laramie County is growing. And it, there's lots of jobs here, not only in... You know, not only in the, the county jobs, um, but, but we need everybody to be employed here. You know, grocery people, the janitors. You know, I thank the janitors that worked all the way through COVID because uh, without them taking care of things and keeping things clean, that disease probably would have spread a lot more than it did throughout our county. So 
all jobs are important and all people are important and I think we can kind of be more uh, community oriented to help everybody in the community even new members and visitors okay now correct me if I'm wrong here but as I understand it the the jail has not been booking people for misdemeanors is that correct uh to, to as far as my understanding goes the last time that I was there it was a supervisor decision whether they would be booked in on a misdemeanor uh, most of the time that they were only booking in was on uh, if it was a misdemeanor if it was associated with a violent crime do you, somebody would be at risk or the person themselves would be at risk do you agree with that policy you know n- no I really don't agree with that you know I, that there are certain things I think that we can cite and turn away uh, it seems like every time somebody gets caught with a little bit of marijuana on them we're bringing them into the jail and I think that's something that we can kind of side the ticket and have them go to court on uh, a DUI is technically a misdemeanor uh, we need to bring those in and get them sobered up to get them to court there's there's a lot of other things that can be misdemeanors that we need to address and and take care of there's a lot of mental health issues in with a lot of those arrests going on so a lot of those people that are getting arrested and cited on misdemeanors should be incarcerated just to the fact that their mental state's not appropriate to be in the community at the time until they can get um help that's oftentimes provided to them within the jail from the psychologists that we have there to to help them out and kind of get them back on track okay i'm speaking i know go ahead go ahead sorry and i know that uh there's been a lot more issues with that due to the COVID, and that's why they were uh, turning people away for overcrowding but i don't think it's going to get overcrowded we have there was 450 beds there uh 200 of them were full but the reason why they don't want to fill up the new jail that was paid for by the county is because they can't keep it staffed so that's another issue that i'd like to tackle as soon as i'm the sheriff is getting that jail up to staff and i can do that as long as they as long as uh people are going to be treated right and not kind of not treated like it is so the environment needs to change altogether so are you saying that they're having problems staffing because of a poor work environment is that is that what you're saying exactly there's a there's a poor work environment there's a poor team there is no team that i would all i would go as far to say that the current administration and i guess i'm probably going to get lit up on this but uh they they're uh they're looked at duty and incompetent okay of course the the current sheriff is not running for re-election um danny glick is, is retiring uh so do you still see that as an issue maybe with don hollingshead or not yeah, I do. I see that. I see a made majority of how come there is short staffing is through Don Hollingstead himself. How so? Well, he's right now, he's functioning as the detention captain, so that's pretty high up there in the chain of command as far as that goes. He does a lot of the hiring, a lot of the interviews. He's had six years, I think, as the, as the captain there. Maybe, no, maybe only four years, but he's had time to fix the staffing issue. He's given, uh, he's had a lot of ideas on how to fix that. He's had, uh, other staff members come to him and talk to him you know and he can't get it done he can't fix it there's the only reason that they're not working on a what's called a combined schedule is because the county commissioner shut him down and said hey you're spending way too much money on this combined system get get off it get off the overtime so they did but they're still spending money getting people in there because they have to have a minimum number to work a shift and so yeah your people are getting burnt out i mean these are people that have been there for anywhere from a year to five six seven eight nine ten years getting burnt out and uh it causes issues so they they need to treat the employees better and they then they don't do that they don't care they care about what they have and that's it and so until until the environment changes with somebody new that has innovative ideas like myself it's going to be the same old environment covered up and and hidden away from the community and that's not the way that you run a sheriff's office okay i'm speaking with laramie county uh sheriff's candidate uh, patrick long uh, patrick it's it's no news to anybody who lives here anybody in law enforcement uh that we seem to have an ongoing uh, crystal meth problem in our community is there anything we can do about it well there there is a lot of things we can do about the the methamphetamine that there, there's a whole lot of canines i think in Cheyenne alone, the canines can be useful, 
but a lot of things is to do about the crystal meth issue is is like I mentioned earlier. It takes school resource officers to get back in the schools, back in the communities, so that we can kind of more so be mentors to these kids in in school and and keep them away from a lot of these issues that they're going to have. You know, I th- I think uh, when I was back in in school, they had the dare program, and, and it was a good program. Um, I think a lot of times that helped a lot of kids just to know that, hey, you know, I can talk to somebody here about what's going on and and they're going to help me. They're not here just to arrest me, harass me, uh, do all these other things that are associated with that. And and I think uh, the meth is a big issue. That, and, the, and the biggest issue is that the chemicals and the products are so readily available to make it. How do we take care of that? I'm, I'm not too sure because the, a lot of those are just household products. What we, what we can do is be more proactive in trying to keep it off the streets, being in the communities, and and, uh, and continue to have a more presence in the community so that people know, hey, we're out there, we're watching. Don't, don't be crazy. Don't be, you know. And it, it's easy to spot somebody that's on methamphetamine real, realistically because they're going to be, their their mental state's not right. You're going to see, you, I mean, there's a whole lot of indicators for people that are in law enforcement that know how to recognize if somebody's on drugs or not on drugs. Is the meth problem getting any better or not? No, I don't think it is. And, I, and I'd actually venture to say that it's gotten worse because people are uh, going to heroin-based stuff. And I think, <laughs> I, I don't know how much that's been brought to the community's attention, but there is black tar heroin in Cheyenne and uh and that needs to be addressed too. Um, um, there's also uh, fentanyl being made and laced into different products that are messing people up. That's a dangerous, pretty dangerous drug. But um, you know, it, it, it's going to happen here in Cheyenne because we're a corridor with two major inter- interstates on it. You got 80 and 25 connecting in. Other counties and, and uh, cities throughout the state of Wyoming have had issues with it. So, of course, you know. People can come up from uh, Mexico, wherever, through a lot of different routes to get here. It's a dropping point, you know, for for the drugs. And then they're going over probably, I'd guess, to say they head over on to uh, Albany County because that's a college community. But so I'd like to, when I'm the sheriff, I'd like to work with the other counties and kind of get together and include a plan that would take care of that all together. Um, because realistically, the problem with Laramie County on the drug issue isn't going to get better until the sh- other sheriffs in the state of Wyoming come together and uh, have a discussion to fix the issues along in, in their counties. I, I realize that over in uh, Platte County, there's a couple ladies involved in a lawsuit uh, against actually actual county officials, uh, mayor, and uh, things over there that is, I'd, I'd like to have more details on that, you know, but it sounds like they were kind of trying to push to clean up the city and the um, city founding officials or the, you know, the so-called important members kind of pushed them out and got rid of their jobs and they got a new chief of police over there because of it. So that that has to change too. If, uh, you know, as the sheriff, they got, you got to be able to work with other individuals in, um, throughout the relationship. You know, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on in the, district attorney's office i saw some papers uh in the news on that uh, stuff going out and i haven't really hold, heard a whole lot about how that was going so I, i'd kind of like to uh, look into that a little bit and see who's running for da i don't think anybody's really put out there that they're going to run for the district attorney's office yet or uh, i would assume that man love will probably be uh, running again um you know, but I just want people to be aware of what's going on and, and how to get things solved for the community so it's better as a whole. I haven't heard of any other candidates. In fact, I haven't heard of any candidates running for DA um, at all. I, I, I don't know if Leanne Manlove will run for re-election. I haven't spoken to her about that. I haven't really heard of any candidates filing, but we're still a year out, too, so there's ways to go. Um, okay, I'm speaking with Patrick Long, candidate for Laramie County Sheriff. Of course, uh, Patrick, if you go a few miles south here, marijuana is legal. Is that a problem for us in Laramie County? You know, it's it's uh, it's really not a problem. The, the marijuana is really not a problem when you when uh, when you look at all the other drugs here. Um, you know, eight miles to the to uh, Colorado, people people are going to do it there. I don't think that the marijuana is an issue.
so much as the meth and the heroin and the uh, fentanyl is in Cheyenne. And it, and it, I would say that it is a slight issue, but um, uh, alcohol itself and the DUIs associated with that are, are a more major issue than uh, than the marijuana is. Okay, we talked about Don Hollingshead, who has said he's running for sheriff. Pretty much everybody expects our former police chief, Brian Kozak, to run. Um, how would you do things differently than Brian Kozak? How would I do things differently than Brian Kozak? Yes. Well, you know, I, I think that the mayor, the current current mayor, uh, Collins, made an excellent decision when he decided to get a new chief of police and, and uh, went from the outside to get one and introduced him into the community because that's what he saw to be fit for change for, for uh, the city of Cheyenne and Laramie County. Um, Brian Kozak, I, look, I think, had a relatively good career in law enforcement, but I don't, I don't think he's kept up to date on how to do things, and I think he's done, oh, uh, how do you say, I think he's probably got a little bit too many skeletons in the closet to deal with when it all starts coming out in the, in the newspapers and things. And, uh, you know, one of the things that I think he's going to have a hard time getting over is that the coin shop, issue the coin shop murder that happened uh, I don't think back in 2015 still unresolved I know there's still a lot of people that don't feel safe being downtown around that area because they, they can't even solve a, a murder that happened when there was hundreds of people out on the street that day for for the parades and things so I think that's kind of lacking for him I think uh, he, the fact that he had probably 10 years as, as the chief or maybe more uh, and he couldn't get things done he they the people gave him the 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 old mayor gave him opportunity to get things done and he couldn't get it done uh, so I don't expect him to be able to get anything done in the sheriff's office beans on how he had 10 years with the city to get things done and couldn't get it done um, the things that I'll do different is like I said I want to see uh, the officers and the deputies out in the community. I want to work with the sh- with the Cheyenne Police Department and the Ohio Patrol. I, I want to work with uh, rangers if they have the state park rangers if they happen to come in here. I want to work with all of them and develop a, a really good relationship um, and a relationship that's not focused on uh, my department's better than your department. It, it has to be a joint operation. We're all brothers and sisters in law enforcement that ideally want the same goal and that's to protect our community and protect our citizens that's what we signed up for we didn't sign up to uh put a badge on our chest and uh, and a whole bunch of bars and stars and say you know i'm you know this is who i am and now you follow all these rules because that because that's not how you run your office you got to be down to earth and and understand your community um and yeah I, i don't know i'd like to look into more of what happened why brian kozak resigned they said it was over uh, the crime records not having gone down for the last three years that they were on the rise. So he disputes those, and and, and rightfully so. Uh, somebody, you know, I, I he's probably going to dispute what I'm saying, and I wouldn't expect anything anything less from him, or I wouldn't expect anything less from Don Hollingstead to dispute what I'm saying. That that's just how it is. We're we're all uh, kind of in the same fight, but but uh, but I've always been a a political fighter and a political activist to stand up for people's rights. So I think I'm well equipped to do that. And, uh, and I don't have a problem taking accountability for what I, what I've said today or anything in the future. Okay. I've asked you questions for the last 20 some minutes. We have about a minute left. Is there anything you'd like to say to our listeners that we haven't talked about? Uh, yeah, feel, feel free to reach out, contact me. I got a page set up. It's, uh, at, um, at long to sheriff you can you can reach out to that and i'll get back to anybody who wants to talk to me um yeah it's been great talking to you i appreciate the listeners that did listen uh hopefully you've got some in insight as to who i am and who i expect to be as your sheriff so that uh, we can get laramie county back on track and uh any questions comments or concerns yeah free field to shoot it over at long to sheriff 2022 Oh, just a real basic question. Are you running as a Republican or a Democrat? I am running as a Republican. I, I wouldn't uh, see it any other way. Okay. I'd like to thank my guest on this segment. I've been speaking with Laramie County candidate for sheriff, uh, candidate for Laramie County sheriff, I guess would be the correct phrasing, uh, Patrick Long. Patrick, we appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate you all giving me a spot on the show. Talk, to you, day. talk to you later.